the Gospel today places us at the Last Supper. Here we see Jesus having one final meal with his apostles. It is the Passover, and for us it is the moment when Jesus will give to us the immense gift of himself in the Holy Eucharist. The scene is Holy Thursday, a holy night when the Lord in his great love brings into being and bequeathed to us for all time his holy body, blood, soul and divinity. It is the institution of the Holy Eucharist, the Holy Mass and the Holy Priesthood. And into the midst of this holy meal we find an unexpected, unholy arrival. Not just the treacherous thoughts whirling around in the mind of Judas, but Satan himself turns up. For we are told that when Jesus gave the bread to Judas, Satan entered him. It is as though Christ offers himself to Judas, but cannot make his home in him, for his soul is become now the haunt of demons. Then Jesus says to Judas, What you must do, do quickly. Or at least that is what I have always understood to be the case. It seems obvious that Jesus is saying these words to Judas, for Judas immediately rises from the supper and leaves. Certainly the other apostles, hearing these words, would have understood them as directed to Judas. But if we notice that Jesus says this to Judas immediately after Satan enters him, then perhaps we might understand that Jesus is not just saying this to Judas, but also to the evil one. Remember, Jesus has said that he has the power to lay down his life and the power to take it up again. In other words, evil and the evil one has no power or authority over him except what he allows. And perhaps this phrase, what you must do, do quickly, is Jesus' way of loosening the restraints which his divine power ordinarily exercises over the powers of evil, so that they may set in train the diabolic plan to bring Jesus to crucifixion and death. And of course, we know that their malice will recoil on them. Their evil plans will be their own undoing. For it might look like Jesus is the helpless victim on Good Friday, but the Lord knows what he is about, and he is ultimately always in control. It's important for us to understand and remember that the Lord holds each of our lives in his hands. Jesus himself told us that every hair on our head is counted by the Father. And so when things go against us and seem to be out of control, remember that nothing can happen to you or to me without God's permission. Now in saying that, not everything that happens to us is God's will, but nothing happens without his say-so. It was not the will of God that Judas would betray Jesus, for God never wills that which is evil. But he certainly allowed it to happen, knew it would happen, and it seems clear, factored that betrayal into his overall plan of salvation for the whole human race. Jesus says very clearly in one of the gospel accounts of the Last Supper, the Son of Man is going to his destiny, but alas for that man by whom he is betrayed, better for that man if he had never been born. What Judas did, even under Satan's influence, he did freely. Such is the awesome power of our free will. With it, we can do great good. But also, with our free will, we can accomplish great evil. Sometimes we can shirk our own personal responsibility in the wrongs that we commit. The devil made me do it. Certainly Judas, whom Satan had entered, might have been able to say that. But the devil cannot make you do anything that your own will doesn't acquiesce to. Judas 
is under the influence of Satan in a strong way because he had already given so much ground to him long before the Last Supper. But let us not just focus on Judas. Yes, he betrayed the Lord, but didn't all the apostles desert him? Wasn't Peter's triple denial of Jesus by swearing oaths that he did not know him? Wasn't that an equally evil turn of events? Yes. Peter's denial, predicted by Jesus but not willed by him, is a really serious thing. A great betrayal of the Lord for whom he swore he would be willing to die. But there is a difference between Peter's betrayal and that of Judas, between the sin of Peter and the sin of Judas. Peter's betrayal was as a result of his human weakness, his fear and his cowardice. Judas's betrayal was as a result of the malice and evil intentions that were festering in his heart and which were exploited by the demonic powers which had set themselves against Christ. For all of us who follow the Lord, there is a bit of Peter in each of us. We are weaker than we think and less faithful to our commitments than we intended to be when we first made those commitments. We can all too easily compromise and betray the Lord when things are getting a bit tough. But we usually do those things out of weakness rather than out of bare malice. God forbid that we should ever find ourselves having a heart like that of Judas, maliciously betraying the Lord with evil intent, giving of our time and effort to overthrow the order he has established and the way of life he sets before us. To have a heart that is filled with weakness is one thing. To have a heart into which Satan can find himself at home is quite something else. 